I think I just needed to say that for myself on this channel before I move forward because I do plan on making you know beautiful videos I, I hope to get better and better and um, I hope to do lots of fun creative things with the kids but I just want to make that known on my channel here that I'm constantly trying to guard my heart Hey guys, <laughs> welcome back to my channel. I just had to wait for like five minutes for Savannah to stop telling daddy that she wanted mommy. Cause that's what happens every time I turn this camera on. Anyway, hi. <laughs> I'm back today for like a chit chatty video I think. I think this one's gonna be chit chatty. I just had something on my heart and I feel like whenever, I don't know if this happens to anyone, but I feel like whenever I have something that's heavy on my heart and I don't address it, I have trouble moving forward. So um, I've had lots of uh, videos that I've been wanting to film and every time I try and film something it doesn't work out and I'm having to refilm things over and over again and anytime that happens to me um, I feel like it's because I am NOT addressing something that I have on my heart I came out here to check on their art projects you guys they turned out so cute so now um, Anyway, I'm going to cut these out and so they can put their little bunny ears on them. But anyway, because I was having such a hard time moving forward with videos and, and other creative things, I was like, you know what, Serena, you just need to go ahead and get this off of your heart, off of your mind. So I'm back for another chit-chatting video. And I guess, hmm, I guess it's going to kind of sort of be a homeschool confession about guarding your heart. The other day, um, I was sitting down to answer some emails, um, comments, and things like that. And I have a strange relationship with social media, and I feel like the social responsibility that comes with social media. Basically, I was sitting down to answer some emails, and I stumbled upon um, a couple of homeschool channels and homeschool Instagram accounts. And I was talking to a friend about how I miss the old Instagram. When I first started looking for homeschool support, because I was totally new to this and had no idea what I was doing, Instagram was a great place for me to be. I made a lot of really, really wonderful connections with other homeschool moms, and we were able to share uh, bits of our journey as we began, and it was wonderful. And then very quickly, I feel like it started to become different I'll say that different it started to become different and there was a very weird line between homeschool encouragement and inspiration and sharing one another's journey and being inspired by that and then it became a thing it became a thing to um, curate these photographs and ideas for homeschool. When I first started researching, say, on Pinterest, it was very rare that you could find, you know, information on homeschool. And a lot of the posts were from um, blogs that weren't so well done, but had were chock full of wonderful information from homeschool moms that had been doing it for years and years, and it was great. Very quickly, it became something that was a little bit like information overload. Does that make sense? I don't want to say it like it's a bad thing because I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful to have so many different places that you can go to to um, look for inspiration from other moms who did different activities and tried different things with their kids. I think it's really wonderful. But what I noticed is, especially um, with Instagrams, uh, homeschool Instagram accounts and homeschool YouTube accounts, there's like, for me, there's like this fine line between let me show you our journey and things that worked for us and some of the things that we did and maybe that would help you along the way. And then the other side of that is, okay, I would like to present myself as 
an authority or an expert and if you know anything about me and if you have been following me on any of my channels or anywhere you should know that I am not a fan of the expert I feel like we should always be learning at all times and yeah so it's a weird place between let me share with you what we're doing and some of the things that we tried and hopefully they may work for you and then the other side of that is hey you know let me give you a bunch of tips and tricks and this has you know this in hopes of becoming some type of business now don't get me wrong i am not against you know you setting up yourself in a place where you can share tips and advice and be a you know a source of inspiration for other homeschool moms um i think that's wonderful sometimes i have a hard time with um the authenticity of it all um and i think that that comes because i am a photographer and I know what it's like to try to capture special moments and special memories, but they still be staged. And I think there's a fine line between what we do in real life and what is set up to create um, a beautiful visual image. I choose to always try and be as real and as authentic as possible. And it's not like they're not being authentic. That's not what I'm saying. But maybe I should back it up a little bit. I told you guys this was going to be all over the place and chit chatty. When I first had Cameron, that was when I picked up photography more seriously. And I loved it. I have said this before, but homeschool, our homeschooling journey and homeschool for me has been the hardest, hands down, the hardest thing that I've ever done in my life. Um, there's been a lot of challenges, a lot of um, growth. And for me, there's a lot of things that the Lord has been working on me to weed out and to um, make beautiful. You know, all those ugly bits and ugly parts that come with being a flawed human and, and him turning that into something wonderful. It's an ugly process sometimes. When I started off on this journey, it wasn't something I thought that we would be doing. One of the things that really helps or has helped me through and has helped me heal and helps me to keep going are my gifts. And some of my gifts are photography. Photography is a major reason for um, why I experience so much growth and why I am moving along in this journey. I have days where I feel like the worst thing ever. The guilt is crazy. I'm dealing with a lot of negativity and doubt, depression and things like that. And when I turn on my camera and I get on the floor with the kids and I get to literally see things from a different perspective. And I thank God for that gift and that ability for me to be able to do that. And that is what helps me through. I started taking more and more photos and video of of my family and of our homeschool journey, I wanted to create videos um, to document that. Uh, this was back when I just had no idea really what YouTube was and I thought people just went on to look at hair tutorials, which they do, which are wonderful. And I stumbled upon a program or a um, platform called VMO and uh, that was like a natural progression for me because I was already a photographer and so VMO was kind of like a professional videographer um, site for you to be able to load your videos onto. So I looked into that and I, I stumbled upon YouTube somehow and it was between VMO and YouTube and I of course wanted to go more towards VMO side because it was like you know it was legit to me it was more the professional video and I was like yeah I just need a place to store my videos and learn more about um, taking better pictures and, and better videos and films and things like that when I came across YouTube and I found that people were able to share you know with others number one I just thought that YouTube was a little easier it was free <laughs> you know which VMO is different because at that time you had to um, purchase I think to a certain amount to load anyway and I knew I was going to be loading a lot of video 
so YouTube was kind of slowly climbing up the ladder as far as you know where I was going to host my videos and I figured you know that it would be a great option I'd be able to keep the videos private and just share them with my family members and that was kind of how it started so I started loading videos that way with no intention of sharing them publicly and then I thought to myself you know what um, I it would be wonderful to find a community of other like homeschoolers and I wasn't finding that in my area so I said well why don't I just make my videos public and then that way you know if I put myself out there that opens me up to connecting with other homeschooling families or homeschooling moms so anyway long story short that was how I ended up on YouTube <laughs> and it's been a huge blessing for me because it helps me through and and so I there's always this weird balance for me because yes I do want to take really beautiful photographs and I want to take really wonderful video to be able to keep as documents for me but at the same time I feel like there's also a social responsibility that when other people are um, looking at what you're doing that you um, I don't I never want to create this facade that uh, you know every day is as beautiful and as, as light and airy as this and on one end I don't completely think that I have to lay out that disclaimer every time I mean I enjoy doing that but not like other people have to do that but um, I get a lot of people that that um, compliment the quality of the videos and things like that but you guys have to remember that you know this is part of my gift I kind of sort of know what I'm doing um, yes my homeschool room is it looks light and airy but I try to always comment back and say that it's not as bright as it seems um, in real life it's 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 kind of gloomy looking but with camera settings and um, editing you can make it brighter and I do that because I think it's more visually appealing for others to watch and for me to watch um, and I don't think that anything is wrong with people putting out beautiful photographs of their homeschool day or beautiful videos of their homeschool day I just think that it is our personal responsibilities as homeschool moms to guard our heart I'm finally getting to the point. <laughs> I do. I think that it is our responsibility to guard our heart and to understand that as we are constantly receiving information um, every day, there's this weird balance between your, you know, the the location of your heart that morning or that day, and the things that you allow to come in and how you receive them. And what I mean by that is so I try to limit the amount of homeschool videos or pictures or things like that that I am looking at because I noticed a shift in my heart. So sometimes I can open up Instagram or I can look at YouTube videos and I can watch a video and say, that was wonderful, that was awesome, you go girl, you're amazing, your kids are so lucky, that type of deal. And then there's a shift sometimes that I noticed if I'm having not such a good day and I'm feeling no, you know, not very good about my skills as a homeschool mom. I mean, I try to limit or even just eliminate um, what I am looking at um, because then there's a weird place where it becomes, well, I need to do that activity. Or I could, you know, I could totally do that activity or I need to be doing that or I need to buy this thing or whatever else. And I think we have to be very, very careful with that. And we, um, I have to be very, very careful with that and guard my heart because um, I homeschool by heart. I am always trying to be led by the Spirit because I believe that my Creator is who made me who made them and knows everything about them and it's my job to stay in tune with him so that I know what I'm supposed to be doing with my children they're all unique they're all different they're all precious and this is gonna get really emotional because I really do love people and I really do love children and I really do feel like they are a huge blessing and a lot of times because of you know 
the race in life. We get caught up in other things and all of the things that we're consuming. And we start to make decisions based on that. But really, we should be in tune with our children and what works well for them and what works best for them. So I have to be really careful with that because sometimes I'll see a certain activity and I'll be like, we should be doing these activities today. And then the whole day I spend forcing activities on them that aren't really producing any real fruit um, except a good picture. And so that's why I haven't been as consistent on my social platforms, I guess is what they're called, is because I try to always be careful that I'm not getting caught up in that. And um, I wanna be sensitive to the idea that maybe the activities are not what's best for Cameron, you know, this week. I just wanna do what's best for them. And I feel like how can I truly do what is best for them as they're on this journey early on towards their purpose if I'm always looking at what other people are doing with their kids. I just feel like these children are also precious and I feel like their purposes are all so unique and wonderful and I feel like the best part of homeschool is that you get to be there to lead them in the right way. But if I'm trying to force, you know, my six-year-old to spell as many words as I saw such and such as child do on Instagram today when he is not meant to go on that same path that that child is, then, I mean, who am I really serving? You know what I mean? Like, I may be um, raising an architect and an artist and a janitor you know if it's one of my child's purpose to be the best darn janitor out there who changes lives with how he you know um, with how he serves the school that he um, cleans and that was meant for him then I want to be okay with that and I want to my heart to be in a position where I can lead him in the right way to show him that um, that life is not about becoming a doctor or winning a spelling bee. Now those things are wonderful but I want them to do what they were purposed and meant to do and how can I teach them to be sensitive to that if I'm always copying others does that make sense? Anyway, the bottom line is that I move at a slow pace when it comes to sharing because there's a lot of things I know that I can, but ultimately I want to be sensitive to what they need. And I feel like that is the biggest um, benefit to homeschool is that you are in a position where you can truly be sensitive to what they need in order to fulfill their purpose and to learn that early on. So, yeah, <laughs> um, it's something that I'm working on, practicing on a daily basis, on a minute by minute basis, how to guard my heart when it comes to the homeschool mom that I am and um, the homeschooled children that I have. So, um, and it's, it's an interesting place to be because I'm an artsy person. You know, and a lot of the times I think to myself, am I doing too many artsy things with them, you know? And I work through that in my head. And I try to just always make sure that I'm not pushing my things on them, that I'm just using, you know, my strengths in order to communicate certain things to them. And I think it's an interesting balance. But anyway, I'm saying that to say that if you're seeing other people who are take, have these beautiful Instagram feeds of their homeschool life, know that it's curated. I'm not saying that anything is wrong with it. It's beautiful. You know, it's a wonderful thing to be able to take beautiful pictures of your homeschool days. It's nice to look back on. But we all have rough times. And if anything, there are more rough times than there are pretty picture, you know, worthy times in homeschool life. And so, I think I just needed to say that for myself on this channel before I move forward because I do plan on making 
you know, beautiful videos. I, I hope to get better and better. And um, I hope to do lots of fun, creative things with the kids. But I just want to make that known on my channel here that I'm constantly trying to guard my heart. And, um, and I really pray that you do, that you're able to as well. So we can all raise our babies to be exactly who they were meant to be and change this world because it needs to be changed. <laughs> It needs to be changed and yeah I'm really proud of myself that I didn't cry because that's how like deeply I felt about it in my heart but I'm really grateful for you guys I, I really love like I say all the time that you reach out to me and talk to me and that um, you tell me your names Meg <laughs> um, I love knowing your names because I literally feel like we're friends and we're in this together even if we are super far apart I just I want us to all like be in this together and raise our babies to be just amazing, game changing, world changing children. Anyway, I'm going to go, um, I need to cut these out and yeah, that's all I